Hello, welcome back. So, today's class we will continue discussing on the cross coupling reaction or so to speak the carbon carbon bond formation reaction. In the last class we have seen the generalized mechanism for the carbon carbon bond formation reaction. The name reactions there are plenty of it in this domain so to speak lithium and magnesium as a transmetallating reagent would be called Kumada reaction, boron as a starting material or organo, organo boron reagent if it is used for these carbon carbon bond formation reaction this that is usually called the Suzuki reaction. If it is tin that is Tillet reaction, if it is silicon that is the Hyama reaction or if it is um, you know as we said um, zinc it is Nigisi reaction right. So, all these reactions are the one which forms the basis for the difficult carbon carbon bond formation reaction that one would like to achieve. The generalized me mechanism that we have discussed we have incorporated palladium uh, 0 to 2 plus catalytic cycle. Now, as we also discussed that that mechanism is not going to be the case for everyone or every metal sometime it is radical reactions most importantly sometime when we do have the, the, the you know nickel as a catalyst then we have a radical reaction in place. We today we will see the transmetallation reaction little bit how transmetallation reaction is occurring. We have discussed the oxidative addition as the first step then the transmetallation then the reductive elimination from the process. Today we will just briefly look at the transmetallation process and then start discussing mainly about the Kumada coupling in short. Let us look at the transmetallation process. Transmetallation often this is often happening often happening via sigma bond metathesis which is interesting quite interesting I would say often via sigma bond metathesis. What you have here is palladium X and the transmetallating reagent or R m right R prime m for example, sigma bond metathesis usually will give rise to the palladium metathesis palladium x and R prime this is the four center mechanism or sigma bond metathesis mechanism that would be involved in the transition state and we have palladium R prime and exchange of partner X m. Now, substituent effects usually for for example, oxidative addition if you are looking at oxidative addition substitution has a lot of lot of uh, importance in the process. Overall if, if you look at uh, if we have an electron rich substituent on organohalide we have a slower reaction. If we have a sterically bulky substituent in the organohalide reagent then also we have a very slow reaction. On the other hand if the living group is iodo that is more facile over bromo than chloro and um, you know the reactivity pattern of the aryl halides are also quite interesting and their electronic properties would matter a lot during the processes. Let us look at again the properties of, of organo, uh, organo halide that would be important for these uh, for these cross coupling reactions. Substituent effect effect for air x organo halide reagent right. Well, um, more electron rich aryl will be having a slower reaction ok. The opposite also true definitely true um, electron deficient aryl halide will be giving faster reaction more hindered the reaction is sterically uh, it is challenged reactions are. So, then we have a slower reaction and effect of X that is organohalide what type of 
organohalide, halide you have effect of X is usually iodo is more reactive than bromo which is similar as OTF and then the chloro. Okay. So, this is this is an interesting reaction pattern and we, we would say uh, the reactivity pattern can be uh, consistent or is consistent with the oxidative addition uh, at the organohalide reagent. Okay. Let us try to look at each of these carbon carbon bond formation reaction in little bit more detail. We again we will give try to give a uh, overview and then we will discuss few of these things in more detail. Today we will start discussing about the Kumada coupling. Again Kumada coupling is the one where organolithium or organomagnesium reagent is used for the carbon carbon bond formation reactions. Let us look at the Kumada coupling in little bit detail and then uh, some of the example we would like to discuss as well. So, Kumada coupling it is discovered in 1972 okay that's one of the golden era i would say rx r lithium and or r mgbr of course or r mgbr any of these in presence of palladium catalyst would give you r r prime okay this is the r prime one of those r and r prime will be utilize. The common catalyst that is used are the one which is usually known as palladium tetrakis or palladium tetrakis triphenylphosphine that is usually referred as palladium tetrakis or we, we do have DPPF as the reagent as well or the ligand for palladium and we do have PPH2 DPPF is PPH2 reagent, this is the ligand and palladium chloride is used for this purpose. Also we can have DPP as the ligand for the palladium and we do have palladium chloride, these different palladium chloride that can be used for these processes. Now for the Kumada coupling reaction as or for any of these carbon carbon bond formation reaction, we know that usually although we need a palladium 0 as a catalyst, but we start with palladium 2 that is quite interesting. So, what is usually thought or has been proven by now that initial starting material although is palladium 2, palladium 2 is generating palladium 0 very rapidly under the reaction condition. So, the real active species is palladium 0 that is undergoing oxidative addition with aryl halide or organohalide reagent, but the starting material is let us say for example, palladium chloride or palladium acetate these are palladium 2. So, there must be a very good mechanism by which these palladium 2 reagents are forming this palladium 0 reagent. But what is wrong with palladium 0 as a starting material? Well, usually palladium 0 itself cannot be very um, cannot you cannot buy it from the uh, from the commercial source except when you have a very good stabilizing ligand with the palladium 0. For example, palladium DBA PD2 DBA3 or the palladium DBA or other other palladium 0 reagent where you have ligand a ligand associated with it by virtue of the ligand being very good donor, you know displacing that ligand with your desired ligand that is usually a phosphine ligand becomes challenging or it competes with the phosphine binding. So, therefore, you know extra ligand you usually do not want to have during your uh, palladium catalysis that can hamper your real catalytic cycle. So, the idea usually that is found to be very general is you start with palladium 2 under the reaction condition in C2 it will form palladium 0 rather rapidly. Some cases when it is slow then there could be a problem, but otherwise palladium 2 to palladium 0 formation happens in presence of often the starting material that you need to use for the carbon carbon bond formation reaction. We will discuss one of the method by which the palladium 2 is converted to palladium 0 in C2. Therefore, palladium 2 is used as the material for these cross coupling reactions. Okay. 
generation of palladium 0 from palladium 2. Of course, there exist several mechanism by which this happens. This is just one of the mechanism. A specific case, palladium chloride, let us say we are using, palladium is in plus 2 oxidation state that is not of our interest. Um, we are interested in palladium 0. So, what happens if you are doing the Kumada coupling with organolithium reagent? If you are using let us say 5 percent palladium, so um, nearly 10 percent organolithium reagent will be required. This is used, this is where we, we see that little bit excess of organolithium is used, let us say 1.1 equivalent, that 0.1 equivalent will be utilized for palladium 2 to palladium 0 formation. Okay and often we have palladium to R and R prime that is what is expected. Um, you know from here let us say this you, you have R prime, from here you will get um, R prime and R prime. This is a side product in, and it is forming in very less amount and in the process what you get ln palladium 0 that is the one which you are interested in. So, what you have seen right now is Palladium 2 uh, has a starting material is converted to palladium 0 in presence of sacrificial organolithium reagent. Organolithium reagent in any way you are going to use for your Kumada coupling reagent, some part of those organolithium reagent will be utilized for palladium 0 formation. That is usually true for almost every carbon carbon bond formation reaction by utilizing this sort of cross coupling reaction. One of the reagent will be helping sometime base combination of base little bit of uh, little bit of oxygen or air or moisture sometime the other organ uh, boron reagent and so on. In any way one way or the other one need to form palladium 2 to palladium 0 because palladium 0 is the one you are interested in that is the real active site active species. You do not want palladium 0 to be directly used from the market because palladium 0 is stabilized with a ligand which is usually difficult to get rid of from the palladium 0 site. Okay. Now, that is one of the method. Let us look at some of the example of these Kumada coupling reactions. One of the example that is uh, easier for these uh, styrenyl bromide for example, in butyl magnesium chloride. So, if you are using catalytic amount of palladium DPPF chloride you get 90 percent yield of the product which you might be interested in in butyl in over here. This is trans geometry, trans geometry both in the starting material both in the product that is very interesting both the starting material and the product will have the same geometry. That is one of the key factor one would look for the starting material and the product formation. If you have a trans olefin, uh, you know alkenyl halide if you are starting with, if it is having trans geometry will you get trans or a mixture of cis and trans or cis? The answer for the Kumada coupling for example, it retains the geometry. So, if you start with trans you get the trans. Well, to demonstrate this point even one can utilize a mixture of cis and trans and selectively the one that is more reactive will be giving the product first, the other one which is less reactive can give the product next. Let us look at one of those examples where we have two starting material, one is trans in trans geometry, the another one is in cis geometry and then you are reacting that with the in under the Kumada coupling condition and then what is the product formation during these processes. So, we are looking at E versus Z or Z selectivity Z reactivity pattern. The starting material we are taking first is the one where you have a trans geometry and the corresponding other one is 
there let us say you take 67 is to 33 that means, you know 2 is to 1 category you are taking one equivalent of it total you have these two reagent uh, in one equivalent, but one of them is 67 uh, is and another is 33 equivalent or 0.67 and 0.33 equivalent. And if you are reacting this with 0 0.66 equivalent that means, you know if it is 2 is to 1 you are taking 2 equivalent of N propyl magnesium bromide. So, that means, you are going to do the Kumada coupling in presence of the palladium catalyst specifically let us say DPPF dichloride if you are taking. Now, what is observed in these cases is you get see since you have 2 is to 1 and 2 equivalent of the organo magnesium reagent and you get um, you know the one of the product only selectively you get the trans product that is more reactive. So, 2 equivalent reacting with or 2, two is to 1 the 0.66 equivalent or 0.67 equivalent reacting with 0.66 equivalent of n propyl magnesium bromide to selectively give this product in trans geometry and the, so the, this starting material is selectively 100 percent converted to the product this reagent although similar only it is the cis one is not reacting at all for the product formation reaction. Now, that is quite interesting because you know when even when you have a mixture still you can fish out the one you want based on their reactivity. Okay. So, the geometry is const, you know geometry is retained during the um, Kumada coupling reactions it is it, although it is a mixture of trans and cis there is no mixture of product formation as long as you have the controlled uh, delivery of the organo magnesium reagent or Grignard reagent if you are using in a very selected amount. Now, this Kumada coupling is very good right as you see that it is it can it can maintain the stereochemistry it is a very good uh, approach, but the problem well one would uh, expect that you are using organo lithium reagent or you are using the Grignard reagent as the coupling partner these reagents are very reactive and they are notoriously reactive towards functional group. So, therefore, functional group compatibility is an issue that is the major drawbacks of the Kumada coupling although it is a great reaction, but if you have too many functional group ester, ketone you know different other uh, aldehyde and other sensitive uh, cyanide other sensitive functional group you could run into danger because under the reaction condition those functional group can also get affected by this organo lithium or organo uh, this um, you know magnesium or the Grignard reagent that, that you are using. So, one has to be careful about the Kumada coupling. Okay. Now, next we would like to briefly discuss about the Suzuki reaction. So, each of these reactions we can discuss hours after hours because there are lot of advances been made, lot of problems been addressed first of all identified and then addressed and these are truly why the organometallic chemistry is considered very highly in modern synthetic chemistry. Let us we are trying to keep it brief maybe we will uh, we'll come back to these discussions once again in, in greater detail. Let us look at briefly the Suzuki reaction. Suzuki reaction I think is one of the most promising and one of the most popular reaction at this uh, point of time and it is very truly perhaps one of the most referred chemistry by chemist and non chemist alike. Okay. Let us look at the Suzuki reactions. So, the reagent what is used organohalide once again and organoboron reagent or boron reagent BY2. Now, palladium catalyst is used sometime also nickel sometime nickel okay. additive stoichiometric additive are used usually stoichiometric additive are used palladium catalyzed reaction stoichiometric use and the form R R prime if it is a Br 2 
that means trialkyl borane that can also be used as the suppling uh, sufficient or uh, you know suitable coupling partner for the Suzuki reaction. If you have a boronic acid, okay, this is boronic acid that is one of the most famous one that is used. If you have boronic ester that can also be a suitable partner for this sort of reaction boronic ester. If you have aryl um, trifluoroborate, okay, um, usually called molandarets trifluoroborate that can be also used as, as the coupling partner for these reactions. So, there are many different organoborane reagents that can be used um, for the Suzuki coupling reaction, but invariably usually they end up giving the product quite nicely. How one would get the transmetalating reagent in presence or transmetallation in presence of those organoboron reagent is one of the areas people have studied and it is now quite well understood. You need a base, you need a nucleophile for this organoboron reagent to be participating into the transmetallation step. Once again oxidative addition will be the first step, then transmetallation and then reductive elimination for this carbon-carbon bond formation reactions. Let us look at the transmetallation utilizing organoboron as the material and how they might will be involved during the processes. So, basic additive is usually required The basic additive could be your sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, fluoride, etcetera. These are uh, these are called usually nucleophile. Let's say we can call them, and it is reacting with organoboron reagent. For example, uh, organic organoboronic acid, organoboronic acid re reacting with nucleophile to give R B this nucleophile hydroxo two. Overall this is more reactive in transmetallation. The resultant species becomes more reactive in transmetallation than compared to this organoboronic acid or any organoboron reagent that might be used for the process. Now, that, that is quite interesting because organoboronic boron usually itself is not that much good for transmetallation. But when you have a nucleophile such as base sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, fluoride, anything you want, once you add that, then it becomes a much better transmetallating reagent by which this transmetallation reaction uh, can proceed and therefore product formation can be viable. What is also important to understand that these reactions are quite useful, not only um, you know. A aryl and aryl coupling, which is usually the case or usually most widely studied um, or um, Suzuki reaction where you have let us say aryl halide reacting with ar another aryl boronic acid to give you aryl aryl that means bi aryl fragment. Okay. That is I think is quite well understood or quite well explored. The one which are little bit problematic could be the um, alkenyl halide one where you have this uh, al alkenyl halide reacting quite efficiently for the boronic acid reaction as well or the Suzuki reaction. Let us try to look at one such example where as sp 2 carbon of course, alkenyl halide is reacted with alkenyl boronic acid or uh, boron reagent to give you the carbon carbon bond formation between the two alkenyl centers. Let us look at the examples. We have let us say protected alcohol and organo re boron reagent and we have this alkenyl halide for example, over here to give you these again both the partners are sp 2 carbon center and these are alkenyl these are considered as 
the coupling between this sp2 and this sp2 where it is alkenyl and this is also a conjugated one along with the alcohol you know you have allyl uh, alcohol as well and over here allyl alcohol protected as well. From here on you can get in presence of palladium tetrakis you can get the desired product that is quite amazing I would say because the overall the product formation. So, this is your new bond and of course, this is E geometry and this was uh, the Z geometry over here. Uh, as from the starting material, the same geometry is, is retained. Uh, of course, the rest of the things can be um, can can be as as it is. Okay. So, what you see in this particular product, what is most important for this two particular uh, starting material is these are having a particular geometry both on the halide and at the boronic acid reagent. But irrespective of the geometry, you see in the product formation both the geometry are retained. Okay. As they are in the starting material, you get the same thing in the product formation. That I think is quite amazing and you can perhaps take almost at this point almost any sp2, sp2 bond formation can be done by almost any, uh, I mean not definitely everything, there are limitations, existing limitations are plenty, but most often what you may need, this is the reaction perhaps to go for and the geometry of the starting material could be retained. So, with this would for today's class, we will, would like to summarize that we have discussed the Kumada coupling reaction with plenty of uh, with some example. And um, also we started discussing the Suzuki reaction with, with some very, very attractive example. We, we did not discuss way too many of uh, the other biaryl coupling formation because those are very, uh, very well known. The one which are more difficult are the one where alkenyl halide and alkenyl, uh, alkenyl your uh, organo, um, organoborane reagent are involved. Of course, you know sp3, sp3 carbon center could be another approach or another difficult coupling partner. Indeed, those can also be done uh, by this, uh, by this uh, Shujuki reaction. Anyway, but the prob problem with the Kumada reaction as we discussed, it is a very good reaction, you know geometry of the starting materials can be retained, but since we are using for Kumada reaction organolithium or organo uh, organo, uh, organo magnesium reagent. Therefore, there is a danger of having having the sensitive uh, functional group being attacked under the reaction. So that cannot be Kumada coupling cannot be a reliable part, uh, reliable reaction under a condition where many functional group are there. On the other hand, Suzuki reaction, what uh, is important is it is usually. Uh, can tolerate quite wide variety of functional group, even the geometry of the starting materials retained and a uh, lot of other beneficial features we might will be, we will be discussing in the next class and, and maybe we will come back again in a, uh, in a much broader way to discuss most the, more of the efficiency and the drawbacks of these reaction individually. Till then, we will see you in the next class keep studying this carbon-carbon bond formation reaction. Bye-bye.